Morning, can everybody hear me? Good morning, uh, John Mandel from TVP Public Affairs. I'd like to invite you to uh, the 24, 2024 Tucson uh, Border Safety Event, highlighting the dangers of the journey. Uh, I'd like to introduce Chief John Modlin from Tucson Sector, who's gonna start us off. Hey, good morning, everyone. Thanks for coming. As John Mandel said, my name is John Modlin. I'm the Chief Patrol Agent here in the uh, Tucson Sector of the United States Border Patrol. As probably all of you know, Tucson Sector is currently the busiest sector on the Southwest border. I start off with this fact, not so much to highlight it, as to point out that it has a significant impact on the already dangerous journey across the border here into Arizona. A migrant's journey is always treacherous. The sheer volume of people crossing here magnifies these risks. It puts every life at more peril than ever before. From every single adult trying to evade our agents to infants being carried by their families into this unforgiving environment of sun, heat, and other desert extremes. Those of you from the media, thank you for sharing this and the rest of our message today. My fellow panelists and I cannot fully spread vital information to the vulnerable populations who need to hear it without your efforts and support. I would also like to thank and acknowledge my partners. They represent a variety of governmental, international, and community agencies and organizations on whom Tucson Sector depends. Joining me is Jose Muriente, Deputy Director of Air Marine Operations, Tucson Air Branch. Thank you, Deputy, for hosting here as well. Ray Reed, Deputy Special Agent in Charge with Homeland Security Investigations. The U.S. Border Patrol's Foreign Operations Branch, Rafael Barcelo, Consul Titular of Mexico, Juan Pablo Val Valdivieso, Consul of Ecuador, Carlos de Leon, Consul of Guatemala, Bernadette Ruiz Romero, Director of the Assistance to Migrants Office, and Oscar Andrade of Capellanos del Desierto. Thanks to each of you for your participation. Today's border safety event is focused on migrant safety and saving migrant lives. While my focus is on Tucson sector, it's important to realize the dangers of the journey begin well before any migrant approaches the border. There was a time when crossing the U.S.-Mexico border could be done without the aid of a smuggler. That time is long gone. Now migrants seeking to illegally enter the United States must hand themselves over to a smuggling organization. They face financial and physical extortion. They face violence and sexual abuse. They can be killed. They can make it across the border only to be left behind at the mercy of the environment. They can make it across only to be forced into labor or sex trafficking by transnational criminal organizations that will not let them go. Make no mistake, while the U.S. Border Patrol values the lives of each and every person we encounter, smuggling organizations do not. Money is their motivation. The loss of life means nothing to them. While some migrants are abandoned, others are dropped off right at the border. Many of these are give up groups. But in either case, and especially in rugged western Arizona, there is nothing around but inhospitable desert and mountain. No shade, no water. While our dedicated agents do all they can to reach these people quickly, many of them, families, may wait for hours in 110 degree plus summer heat because they have crossed into a remote, desolate area. The reality is that our resources can't be everywhere at once. No matter our technologies, our partnerships, our heroic efforts, all migrants attempting to illegally cross the border into Southern Arizona risk their lives and especially the lives of any young children traveling with them. If you are a migrant, I urge you to cross legally. If you cross illegally, call 911 before you face tragic circumstances. Use our rescue beacons to call for help before desperation turns deadly. Understand that even if you do, you may not survive the crossing. We may not get to you in time. 
Unfortunately, smugglers continue to trick vulnerable populations into believing that crossing illegally into this country is easy. Smugglers lie about the dangers of the desert and they lie about the asylum process. The truth is, the United States enforces its immigration laws and our borders are not open to anyone who does not have a legal basis to enter our country. Furthermore, if you fail to use the many lawful pathways we have for entering and remaining in the United States, you will be presumed ineligible for asylum. You may be subject to prompt removal, a five-year ban on re-entry, and if you do attempt to re-enter, criminal prosecution. If you cross illegally into Tucson sector, you may be transported out of the area while you face expedited removal, including family expedited removal, or mandatory detention during your immigration proceedings. Don't believe the lie of the smugglers. If you and your family legally enter the United States without a legal basis to be here, you will be removed. Despite these realities, I know not all migrants will hear this message. They will place their lives in the hands of deadly smugglers and a deadly environment in the hopes of crossing an international border that is not open to irregular migration. In tandem with our official law enforcement efforts, we will continue to do all we can to ensure these migrants' well-being. Our agents will continue to provide humanitarian and immediate medical care to those who need it, and they will continue to heroically risk their lives to rescue these people. Tucson Sector fosters partnerships on both sides of the border to achieve these efforts. We could not be successful without our network of incredible partners from the state of Sonora, Mexico's Department of Public Safety, C5I, to Air and Marine Operations, Tucson Air Branch, to our foreign consulate partners, and our many law enforcement, governmental, and non-governmental partners across the state of Arizona. The fact remains, however, that any migrant illegally crossing the border faces unbelievable challenges from the journey from smugglers from a desert environment that can be deadly any time of the year. Those who illegally cross face strengthened consequences, including expedited removal and criminal prosecution. If you are a migrant and must come to the United States, do it the right way at a port of entry. Do not cross the border unlawfully. Doing so risks your lives as well as your legitimate opportunity to remain in this country. Thank you once again for being here and for helping us to spread this message to those who need to hear it the most. I will now ask Deputy Director Moriente to share his remarks. Good morning, everyone, and welcome. My name is Jose Moriente. I'm the Deputy Director, Air Marine Operations for Tucson Air Branch. I take this opportunity to speak to you today about a very important message uh, regarding border safety, uh, specifically focus on those of you who are thinking about risking your lives by crossing the Sonoran Desert into Arizona. Uh, first of all, I wanna thank the media for being here today and sharing our message and also our partners who are, are very crucial for this collaboration. Year after year, the Tucson Air Branch has consistently led in conducting the most aviation search and rescue operations along the southwest border. This persistent trend tells us that the volume of people who have risked their lives attempting to cross the border remains unchanged. I must echo the message that Chief Motlin sh uh, shared with you. For those of you who are considering crossing the border, don't do it. Crossing the border illegally is not a path paved with guarantees, but one filled with peril. It's a journey that risks your safety and ultimately your life. The hazards are real, from the treacherous mountain terrain and extreme summer and winter temperatures to the ruthless individuals who will exploit and monetize your hope for their gain. If you do cross, contacting 911 will be a critical component to expedite our search and rescue efforts. Calling 911 may narrow down your position and help our pilots and rescue specialists find your location quickly versus the same help spending precious hours searching for you. Time makes a difference of life and death. If an aircraft is nearby, waving a shirt or any other object will help in finding you quick. In the years the Tucson Air Branch has conducted search and rescue operations, not every, not every search has resulted in locating those in need of help. 
Up in the mountains, we have rescued pregnant women as well as children still in diapers who were abandoned just because they could not keep up with the rest of the group. Unfortunately, other times, our rescues have resulted in recoveries as the individuals have already perished prior to our arrival. With the summer heat arriving, we will see an increase in dehydration and overheat exposure due to the extreme high summer temperatures. These are some of the horrible realities of attempting to cross the desert. In the last 12 months, Tucson Air Base has already performed 110 search and rescue operations, with 15 of those rescues made with our rescue hoist, as you see behind me. Uh, hoist rescues are only performed as a last resort, as they are extremely high risk operations for our air crews and patients. They're literally hanging their lives on a 3 sixteenths of an inch cable. Our helicopters are crewed by Air Marine Operations Rescue Specialists, and in collaboration with U.S. Border Patrol Tucson Sector, we also crew the aircraft with EMT or paramedics from the Border Patrol's Tucson Sector uh, Border Patrol Search and Trauma and Rescue Team, Warstar, who can provide higher level of medical care. These additional EMTs will be focused on SAR or search and rescue calls and supplement the helicopter helicopters already performing our border security mission. All of our aircraft are always capable of transitioning to search and rescue. The entire U.S. Customs Border Protection team is committed to preventing the loss of life for anyone attempting to enter the United States through the desert. Our air crews and ground agents are prepared and committed to protect the sanctity of life. Please, please be part of the life-saving team and share our message. Thank you. Deputy Special Agent in Charge of the Homeland Security Investigations in Arizona. I want to thank Chief Modlin, Deputy Director Valiente, and our guests here today, as well as the media, for participating in this event. Homeland Security Investigations is the primary uh, investigative arm for the Department of Homeland Security. We primarily focus on transnational organized crime, and that's what I'm here to talk about today. When, if you find yourself here a migrant and your journey begins, it doesn't begin at the southwest border of the United States. This journey begins in all, all over the world. It's important to note that the moment that you make the decision to cross and travel to the United States, that you've entered into service and you're putting your life in hands in those that are organized crime members. These smuggling organizations don't care or have any interest in your well-being, your likelihood, your families, or your financial benefits. All they care about is that you're a product, you're a number, and you're a source of income, of illicit income and proceeds for them. As the summer months approach, the dangers only expand. Not only do the journey become more difficult for the migrants that are crossing the desert and traveling towards the United States, but also these individuals are often abandoned, become vulnerable, and are taken advantage of by these transnational crime uh, outfits. I would ask anyone that's planning to take this travel to think about what they're doing how it's gonna affect them and their families when they're putting their likelihood, their livelihood, their lives, their future in the hands of people that they don't know and only view them as a product. Along with our partners at CBP, our partners uh, in the foreign governments and our state local partners here in the United States, our number one mission and duty is to preserve life, to enforce the laws of the country and to protect the border. When you make the decision to travel and migrate to the United States, you're feeding that organized crime outfit. I would ask everyone to think twice about this decision, and if they find themselves in a position where they are in the hands of these organized crime outfits and need help, to seek help. If there's family members here in the United States who are assisting their family members in traveling to the United States or friends, and they become aware of these illegal activities, to report it to law enforcement. Thank you. Good morning, I'm Rafael Barceló. I am the Mexican Consul in Tucson, Arizona. Um, and I am also here to um, express to families and people around um, Mexican migrants to know that Mexico has 
53 consulates in the U.S. to offer assistance and guidance um, to, its, to, to its nationals, uh, but particularly Mexico offers a very valuable resource. It's a phone line that works 24 hours 7. It is called CIAM, the Center of Information and Assistance to Mexicans. Um, and it's very important not only because this center can provide help and support uh, to migrants in distress uh, in um, association, in collaboration with the Missing Migrant Program of the Border Patrol. Uh, but also because can offer um, accurate information regarding the regular pathways to migration. Uh, it is very important for us, for everybody uh, in the U.S. around uh, migrant populations, uh, to let them know of the perils of uh, trusting the word of trafficking of traffickers in 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 in, in its um, in their communities of origin. Um, but particularly important it is that there are resources for everybody to have accurate information, and one of those is uh, the CIAM, the Center of Information Assistance to Mexicans that the government of Mexico offers. It's 24, 24 hours 7, it is a bilingual resource, um, and you can call it uh, both from Mexico or brought from the United States, it is 520-623-7478. Uh, sorry, uh, and it's uh, also important to, to suggest to everyone that is around or working with migrants uh, to receive their information from immigration lawyers, from organizations that work with migrants, or from uh, or with their own um, corresponding consulates, instead of relying in um, what, a, what, a, what a people that are having benefits from, from, from the migration, for particularly from the um, irregular ways to migrate are having. Uh, and if you allow me, I will switch to Spanish to also offer this message in, in, in Spanish. Uh, muchas gracias, soy Rafael Barceló, Consul de México en Tucson, Arizona. Y estoy aquí primero para recordar la importancia de las personas que están cerca de personas migrantes eh, mexicanas o de origen mexicano, eh, de la importancia de los recursos que el gobierno de México ofrece, no solo por medio de los 53 consulados que México tiene en los Estados Unidos, sino particularmente a través de un recurso que está a disposición de todas las personas mexicanas o de origen mexicano, que es el Centro de Información y Asistencia a Mexicanos. Es un centro de llamadas que funciona las 24 horas del día, los 365 días del año, y que les puede ofrecer no solamente ayuda en momentos en los que una persona migrante puede estar eh, teniendo un grave problema al momento de cruzar por las regiones fronterizas, sino también de manera previa les puede ofrecer información eh, real y actual sobre las rutas eh, legales que existen para la migración y los peligros que puede tener ofrecer el mensaje para todas las personas que trabajan alrededor de personas migrantes y familias de migrantes o potenciales migrantes en los Estados Unidos es que tengan en cuenta que no se debe confiar en la palabra de los traficantes de personas es mejor que acudan con abogados o abogadas de migración con organizaciones que trabajan con migrantes y por supuesto con los consulados del correspondiente país en particular particular eh, por medio del Centro de Información y Asistencia Mexicanas, del CIAM, eh, que podrán darles información precisa y acertada eh, sobre las rutas legales y regulares para la migración, pero sobre todo de los riesgos que puede haber eh, de migrar eh, por las zonas fronterizas. Importante recordarles, el número del CIAM es el 520-623-7874, puede llamarse desde Estados Unidos o de México sin ningún costo y eh, estamos siempre en colaboración eh, tanto con el programa del migrante extraviado de la patrulla fronteriza como con otras organizaciones para ofrecer los recursos que eh, las personas pueden tener para que tomen una decisión informada y que no pongan en riesgo su vida, particularmente eh, en las regiones fronterizas que tienen un clima que lamentablemente sigue matando a personas que intentan estos cruces. Muchas gracias. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Juan Pablo Valdivieso. I'm the General Counsel of Ecuador in Phoenix, Arizona. And it's uh, an honor to be here uh, sharing with uh, all the authorities and with you, the members of the press, this opportunity to uh, send a message to uh, my countrymen, the people from Ecuador. Uh, I'm going to uh, continue in Spanish uh, because uh, it is uh, important that uh, 
my message gets through in our native uh, language. Eh, se aproxima eh, el fenómeno natural que es imposible que no ocurra, puesto que la naturaleza es imbatible. Se viene el verano, se vienen las altas temperaturas y se viene eh, para eh, dificultar aún más aquellos uh, esfuerzos que realizan las personas eh, en su uh, trayectoria desde nuestros países de origen, desde el sur, en este caso desde el Ecuador, eh, afrontando todas las dificultades geográficas y de otro tipo. Eh, tenemos que mencionar el caso del famoso tapón de Darién, una zona de grave peligro y que lamentablemente está siendo utilizada eh, para eh, realizar eh, las travesías, auspiciado esto por bandas internacionales de traficantes de personas que, como ya se ha dicho aquí, no paran para nada en su propósito único que es en definitiva el beneficio económico y legal de explotar el tráfico de personas con las ilusiones que cada uno de ellos puede hacerse de realizar sus sueños. El otro eh, escollo es el de la naturaleza. La zona desértica de Arizona eh, tiene una extensión similar a todo el territorio del Ecuador. Consecuentemente, eh, ese es el, la barrera a la cual una persona se enfrenta en circunstancias de temperaturas que superan los 46 grados con humedad relativa de un desierto eh, similar al desierto del Sahara. El desierto no perdona, la temperatura no perdona y no pueden tomar ese tipo de riesgos. Si lo toman, por favor, no se olviden, hay uh, mecanismos de apoyo que les pueden eh, solventar, que les pueden ayudar a superar una, una circunstancia en la cual la vida esté en peligro. Eh, acudan, comuníquense con el 911, también las líneas eh, consulares están abiertas y por supuesto nosotros realizamos un trabajo de coordinación con la patrulla fronteriza en los procesos de rescate de personas que se han perdido. Ese es el, el mayor bien que se puede salvaguardar la vida y no les van a ayudar en eso las bandas que trafican con las personas que no tienen otro interés que el beneficio económico. Son los esquemas institucionales, las instituciones gubernamentales, los voluntarios, los organismos no gubernamentales, los que podemos apoyarles cuando se encuentren en dificultades que impliquen el riesgo de su integridad y la, eventualmente incluso que eso ocurre, no es algo que no acontezca, eh, la pérdida de la vida. De manera que este mensaje debe ser tomado en consideración porque es un mensaje serio y eh, no puede ser desatendido. Muchas gracias. Thank you very much. Good morning, everybody. My name is Carlos de Leon, Consul de Guatemala in Tucson, Arizona. El día de hoy es para mí un honor estar nuevamente con otros en años anteriores en el inicio de la campaña de los peligros del desierto junto a mis colegas y Patrulla Fronteriza. Pero antes que nada quiero reconocer el trabajo de Patrulla Fronteriza y de su equipo del programa de Migrantes Desaparecidos. Sin este programa, nuestra labor no, no la podríamos realizar. Estas comunicaciones las realizamos los 20, la, las 24 horas, los 7 días de la semana. Y siempre encontramos una respuesta y oficiales atentos a llevar esa búsqueda de salvar una persona en el desierto. Pero lo importante es para la persona que viene migrando de manera regular, enterarse de los peligros del desierto de las grandes distancias que tienen que caminar, de que no existe agua, de que la comunicación en algunos lugares no existe y que los coyotes o los traficantes de personas siempre les van a decir 
que las distancias a caminar van a ser cortas, lo que esto no es cierto. También, como en años anteriores, hemos manifestado la importancia de traer consigo un teléfono que tenga una batería, que esté cargada y que la primera comunicación sea al 911 o a algún consulado para que nosotros podamos trasladar esa solicitud de ayuda. Nos hemos encontrado con casos de que las personas empiezan a llamar a la familia y cuando se solicita la atención para ubicar bien por coordenadas para rescatar a esta persona, las personas, los teléfonos ya no tienen esta carga de batería. Entonces reitero de que no se dejen engañar por esos mensajes de que la frontera está abierta, de que el cruce es inmediato y de que en menos de dos horas pueden estar de un lado de la frontera de México a la frontera de Estados Unidos sin ningún problema. Eso es mentira. Y para finalizar, el gobierno de Guatemala, a través del Ministerio de Relaciones Exteriores, se acerca a la comunidad guatemalteca migrante en los Estados Unidos para ofrecerles atención y protección consular. Muchas gracias. My name is Bernadette Ruiz, Head of Attention to Migrants in Sonora. Good morning to the media and to my colleagues who work every day for migrants. Thanks to Chief Joe Mullin for invitation and CVP. Thank you to share to our experience of the subject. I want to comment that the government of the state of Sonora works daily to attend migrants in our territory because of the human vision of our governor, Alfonso Durazo, has on the subject. On the other hand, let me tell that we work every day supporting the government of Mexico, directing the commitment for a regular order, safe and human migration And, to, and that today we, want, we thank the effort of raising awareness about the dangers of the desert. In addition, the National, Migra In addition, the National Migration Institute through their containment, containment effort has reduced irregular crossing through AHO by six, six, 60% and up to 50% of the other ports compared to the last months of last year. We will continue working with international organizations and institutes institu institu uh, that call for human migration and to care for the integrity of those, of those who seek to migrate as well as collaborating with we with the United States of Government uh, to have better results. Um, quiero agradecer la invitación a CBP, al jefe John Mowgli, a todos los compañeros y quiero comentarles también que desde el Estado de Sonora estamos haciendo un gran esfuerzo por seguir colaborando en la prevención de los cruces irregulares y los cruces que son de alguna manera conducidos. Estamos coadyuvando con el gobierno de México también en poder prever todas estas situaciones. Y sí quiero comentar que es la primera vez que el Estado de Sonora está participando activamente en la implementación de protocolos interinstitucionales en donde hay una comunicación entre las dependencias para socializar y sobre todo entender desde la perspectiva humanitaria y los riesgos que con ello conlleva el flujo o el paso de las personas migrantes por nuestro Estado. Vamos a seguir colaborando de la mano con todas aquellas instituciones que sea para bien de las personas que crucen por nuestras fronteras, que transiten por nuestro estado y estamos también muy atentos de cualquier situación que eventualmente pueda darse 
Por primera vez el gobierno del estado tiene una oficina de atención a migrantes en este gobierno que encabeza el gobernador Alfonso Durazo y tenemos también algunos otros centros en donde prestar toda la asistencia necesaria y sobre todo coayuvar también con el cruce regular y con la invitación a que aquellos que quieran cruzar lo hagan de manera regular mediante distintas opciones y plataformas que existen a bien de poder eh, generar una migración ordenada, segura y humana. Muchas gracias. Buenos días, eh, muchas gracias, muchas gracias al jefe eh, John, gracias por la invitación nuevamente. Eh, nosotros somos un grupo ONG, eh, Capellanes del Desierto, nosotros colaboramos también con Patrulla Fronteriza, con los consulados, en búsqueda de nuestros hermanos migrantes y en recuperación también de cuerpos en todo lo que es la franja fronteriza, Estados Unidos-México. Eh, nosotros tenemos ya uh, tres años haciendo esta labor, eh, somos una comunidad cristiana. ¿okay? Eh, en este año nosotros hemos, ya de estos últimos meses, eh, lo que viene siendo a mediados de febrero hasta el día de hoy, se han incrementado las llamadas de auxilio por parte de las familias de nuestros hermanos migrantes de Guatemala, México, Salvador, Honduras, y en esta última semana eh, han entrado llamadas sobre nuestros hermanos ecuatorianos. Eh, y estamos nosotros haciendo eh, campañas eh, de concientización en diferentes partes de, nuestro, de nuestros países, como México, eh, en Guatemala, eh, en El Salvador. Y estamos ahorita preparándonos también para poder ir a, a platicar con el gobierno de Guatemala para poder platicar con la comunidad de los riesgos y los peligros que hay el venirse a, a migrar a, en forma irregular a los Estados Unidos. El peligro no es nada más lo que viene siendo el cruce de la frontera de Estados Unidos, sino es de salir desde que salen de su casa hasta el punto que llegan a la frontera México-Estados Unidos. Es el riesgo que corre cada migrante por los traficantes que vienen siendo secuestros, extorsiones, trata de personas. Y nosotros estamos colaborando ahorita eh, con el gobierno de Guatemala para hacer eh, este, esta campaña de concientización en el mes de julio que vamos a estar en ese país. Eh, el, los temas que vamos a mirar es migración y su desarrollo, causas fundamentales de la migración, migración y género, migración y medio ambiente, migración y salud, migración y crisis financiera mundial, el tráfico ilícito de migrantes como fenómeno migratorio y también eh, en qué consiste el trato ilícito de migrantes y los conductos afines. ¿Qué es lo que no puede calificarse como, como tráfico ilícito de inmigrantes y los conceptos de refugio y solicita, solicitantes de asilo? Eh, queremos nosotros poner también sobre aviso de que no, no es seguro el que ellos vengan eh, por engaño, de que miran en, una, en un anuncio de periódico o en los carros con altavoces donde les están ofreciendo eh, hasta tarifas, eh, ofertas, que si es más de una persona, el precio vale. Entonces nosotros estamos eh, trabajando también eh, en apoyo al migrante sobre las campañas de concientización. Y trabajamos con lo que es con los consulados, eh, cada vez que nosotros tenemos una llamada de un familiar, de un migrante, Hacemos también esa llamada con los consulados y con CBP haciendo el reporte para que se haga la búsqueda. Y nosotros hemos tenido esa respuesta de lo que viene siendo parte de CBP inmediatamente 
cuando ellos nos dicen se encontró la persona o no se encontró. Y la verdad que es un orgullo para nosotros estar en este lugar nuevamente y poder seguir colaborando eh, como lo hemos estado haciendo hasta ahorita. Muchas gracias y estamos a la orden. Thank you uh, to our speakers. Um, as we're running out of time, uh, I think you all pretty much prefer the, the stand-ups, so we're just going to go straight into stand-ups. Uh, Bortak is over there by uh, one of their vehicles. They can do English and Spanish. By the Border Patrol vehicle, we're going to have Chief Maudlin and Gus Soto from the Foreign Operations Branch. Aaron Marine will be by their aircraft. Uh, Mexico and the other consulates uh, over by the, the Mexican table and HSI. Uh, just outside in front of the other aircraft. Um, with that, thank you for coming, and uh, if I can get you to come on over, Chief.